It has been clearly too long for some of you. <laughs> Welcome to Dice Tower Live at Gen Con 2022. I'm Tom Vassell, and we're glad to be here. I want to introduce... <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, look. I, everyone, many people have come to the booth this year and have said, we like your show, and it's really gotten good now that you're not by yourself. All better. Do you know how to dress yourself? My wife is not here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... <laughs> <good>. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not introducing them anymore. Um, and it's because, yeah, I have such a good team. And here is my team. First, we have the youngest person on the group, the person who does not listen to rules, Mike Delisio. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Please continue. Thank you. If you've seen the show, The Librarians, where they go and fight, um, you know, mythical creatures, that's M M Wendy, but also, she does the Dice Tower Library, Wendy Yee! Oh, and, and Pace! Hello, everyone! Next is Z. Hello! <laughs> that's me. That's me. And then we have new, not the newest, maybe the newest. Am I the, the newest? newest. It, it, it doesn't really matter. She'll knife you in the back. Absolutely. Camilla Cleghorn. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Can we start with that guy? <laughs> and Who if you uh, think that we've gotten too funny, <laughs> here to fix that, Chris Yee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we're doing a top five list here. But before we do that, um, I want to have a, I have a couple announcements. <clears throat> One, I'm losing my voice. But two... So is that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no. If we're lucky. We want to thank our sponsor for our Gen Con coverage, The Op. Their booth is booth 135. Go check them out. I will be there tomorrow morning from 1030 to 12, so you might have a chance to play a game with me. So come on by again. That's booth 135. S secondly... Oh, yes. Go ahead. Clap for The Op. Hey, The Op. Secondly, um, Dice Tower West, which you should all come to, yeah. is March 8th through the 12th next year, and the tickets for that are going live August 22nd, Monday at noon, Pacific Standard Time, which a few people are on. So for the normal folks, that's 4 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. No, 3. Oh, see, this is ridiculous. Math is hard. <laughs> I'm sorry for making fun of the West Coast when I can't do math. <laughs> I'm from the West Coast. Can you I do know. math? I know. Uh, I can math. All right. So anyhow, also there's a zombie portal open in the corner at booth 100. I was told to say that. I think those are my announcements. The last announcement is when we're done here, if anyone wants to take pictures with us real briefly, and it has to be quick because there's, well, for the two of you that want pictures, but we're going to do it in the room where we lined up. So we'll just go in there real quick. But also, you can swing by our booth. Our booth is... 2741. 2741. Yes, 2741. That's, it. that's it. You got it. Yes. And finally, <laughs> uh, we got Roy Canada in the back running all of our stuff. Yay! All right. So today we're talking about our top five turnoffs in games. Um, I don't know what anyone put, but we it could be anything. It could be a designer. Mm -hmm. It could be a publisher. Done, yeah. It could be your, you. your could opponent. Be you. <laughs> mm -hmm. It this could is be, your time. I don't know what people put. I hope it doesn't get too personal. Way to give away most of my list, Tom. I'm done. Right. I'm out. I'm just a little concerned about that. But what was everyone's thoughts when doing this? Five's not enough. <laughs> yes. I, I have a lot of uh, repressed rage, I found out. Closer to the mic. I have rage. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> there's, yeah. Go ahead. there's always exceptions to every item and every rule, but by the time you get to my number one, it's pretty exception free. Yeah, I did something similar. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the lower ones on the list were not as rage inducing, and then as oh. you get further up, I'm uh, apoplectic. Ooh, ooh. Like Apoplectic oh. Z put it in the book. Apoplectic. But, but how did you think of the things? Did it just come naturally to you? How did I think of the... The things. Yeah, they generally came naturally, yeah. I looked at my ones. 
and thought about what made me hate them so much. Oh, interesting. Oh. I did not do that. I just walked through the library. I was like, hate that game. Why? <laughs> I, I just thought of a whole bunch of things, and then I kind of summed them up into categories. Number five, oh. people. <laughs> <laughs> Number That's four, you. things. Mm. Yes. For anyone who's not sure, according to Merriam-Webster, apoplectic means pertaining to the end of the world. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> hmm Yeah. Post apoplectic is one of my favorite kinds of games. <laughs> yeah. We can math and we can vocab. Can you use it in a sentence? I'm so sorry some of you skipped going to the hall for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get started here with number five. You can't be mad after wow. that. That's right. It's very, yeah. very that soothing. That was mood killing. That's why it's fine. <laughs> Look, before we get started, can we just acknowledge what a fantastic looking crowd we have? Give yourselves a hand. You look so fantastic. <laughs> Mike, how controversial is your pick that you're starting off with pandering? Can anybody else not see anybody if I'm up here? I'm completely, I can't see. There we go. My number five is one that is not an absolute, all right? It's, it's something that I tend to avoid. I find that it bothers me more often than not, and so I would consider it a turnoff for me. My number five is a particular mechanic slash mechanism. What's the correct, what's the correct mechanism. word? Mechanism. The second mechanism? one, yeah. Yes. So this mechanic particularly bothers me in games. <laughs> it's Joe, the guy who fixes your car? Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My number five is real time. What? Real? Yes. No. Yes. You are wrong. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yes, I've already turned the crowd against themselves. I love it. You realize this is a real-time game, right? No, I'm up here all day. And you're losing. I've got the mic. Uh, so, yeah, I, I tend to dislike games that... I feel like sometimes artificially inject a feeling of uh, panic or, or urgency. I want to feel like my decisions are so challenging, are so difficult, are so meaty and crunchy and chewy and all of those other strange words that we apply to board games, that that's where the pressure is coming from. Not a timer on my phone or even shudder the thought, a sand timer. <laughs> sand is soothing. That's what we learned from uh, the intro. No. If I open up a box, or if I look at the back of the box and I see a sand timer, I'm going to tell you, I am going to instinctively have a bit of, a, of an issue with it. Mm -hmm. And so there have been games that have, you know, worked that way, but, but most times I'm going to be put off by it. So my number five, not an absolute, and it's not doesn't make me apoplectic, Chris, but real-time games. Old. All right, all right. Well, my number five is excessively long games. I do not want a game that... Thank you very much. I don't want to be able to go to work, have a lunch break, come home, and still see people playing the same game. Far too long. This is a real quote from someone trying to convince me to play Twilight Imperium. They completely failed. Completely. So yeah. That's my number five. I thought about putting this on the list, but I couldn't, like, put a time on it. Right, because like, if the game's good, does it matter? I it's, agree. Oh, oh, it matters. You're having fun. Like a pizza. 30 minutes or less. That's it. Okay. I, think, I think four hours is my max. Four hours, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I only got one no. who everyone else no, agrees with me. No, there's one person out there who's like, guy. no. Anything above three hey, hours and 50 hey. minutes. You're no. a Twilight Imperium player, aren't you? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was Bonacore? Oh, it's Bonacore. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I messed up. Next, let's move. <laughs> All right. My number five is something I'll only discover once I'm in that game. I've cracked that open. I've you know, read the rule book, all this. And then I take that rule book and I flip it over and there's nothing on the back of the rule book. <laughs> they are wasting Fair. the back of the rule book. I do not get it. You've had copious amounts of places and, and design choices to display your artwork, to display your cool, you know, whatever. I don't want more on the back of the rule book. That's where you put your turn breakdown, your summary, your, 
you know, breakdown of my choices on my turn, my quick reference. So when I put this game down for four months and come back, I can glance in that and get most of it back. Really bothers me to see a rule book that sometimes they'll put artwork back there and I'm like, okay, well, that's a waste, but that's pretty. Sometimes it's blank, just nothing, it, it, more ink, just black or plain or nothing. And I just don't get it. That's a huge misstep. You know, I mean, it's, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it definitely include uh, player age. You should do that. But then use the back of the rule book too. It's absolutely great real estate and you are throwing it away. And I'm going to find you. I have never thought about that once, Z. What? Never. Not even once. Well, no, I've never, I got I've never thought about he's long right. games either. Yeah, I mean, he's right. <laughs> but what if there's a really good player age? Right. That's all. If you have a really good player, that is that full stop. If there's a really good player aid, why repeat it on the back? Because it's repetitious. Because you have another player aid that way. A giant one? Yeah, yeah one with detail in it. Okay, yeah. okay there you go. You should have yeah. yeah, described it that way. A more detailed player aid. <laughs> you described your number wrong. Yes. Got it. If you could start over from the top with that in mind. If I started again, it would be repetitious. <laughs> That's another vocabulary well word for you all. Right. What if they just replicated the entire rule book on the back cover in a much smaller font? That also would be okay. 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 And you right. can rip it off and fold it up mm -hmm. and fit it in your little card box. Yeah. yeah. And then when you come back to that, a four months later, on the back of that is an even smaller one. You're yeah. like, oh no, you rip that up. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Z. I wonder why you that don't comes with the Inception. Class. <laughs> it's Inception. My number five is too many beiges or beige done wrong. I almost put this on my uh, list. There is a good You're way, wrong. A good way to do beige. Genotype. You can do good beiges, but That's too brown, much beige. Madam. <laughs> fair. I it was taupe. Which is a darker beige, to be fair. Sandstone. But yeah, my eyes just gloss over. And, and typically, Chris is bringing this game to me. And that's also a little bit of like, e no go. Can but confirm. Too, too many beiges. I just gloss over. I, I, see, I see nothing. That's all. There's nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> my number five is Camilla. That's fair, too. That's <laughs> all right, no. My number five is what I call the all-in-one, and not particularly good at any one of those things. The game is competitive, or it's cooperative, or it's two-player cooperative with a semi-cooperative element to it. Make the good game and publish that. Like I said, this is not a hard and fast rule. There are plenty of good games like this, but as soon as I read that on a Kickstarter page or the back of a box, I immediately think, I'll play this later. So that's my number five, the all-in-one or the fapoon. <laughs> all right, before I do my number five, we are now going to jump to Roy Canada. All right, I do want to say that since I'm behind the scenes, I'm not able to really respond to everybody's stuff as this goes along. But I did take a few notes that I want to do real quick since I know the future and I know everyone else's list. So, uh, Z, you're wrong. Also, Camilla, I thought your list would be a little bit more aggressive, and Mike is a total hack. That's outrageous. Honestly, that has nothing to do with our list at all. I just really want to say Mike is a hack in front of a live audience. It's outrageous. And of course, it's you're, outrageous. I'm sure he's saying that's outrageous or something like that. <laughs> anyway, I guess I should just my number five here. My number five is deciphering hieroglyphics. In a game, when you see a game set out on a table, and there's just icons everywhere. It's like icon soup. And you know this is a game that has tons of the iconography in it when you basically have a player's aid that's like the Rosetta Stone of like trying to read the language and figure all that stuff out. I know Race for the Galaxy is a game that has a lot of this stuff going on and a lot of heavy Euro games are just like icons everywhere and it makes it really hard to teach the game and also I normally feel like whoever can learn the new language first is going to end up being the winner, especially the first couple of times you play the game. Anyway, it just takes me out of the game. It's a total turnoff for me when there's tons and tons of icons in a game. Unless there's a player aid on the back of the rule book, the back right? of the book. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. That's how you do that. Mm. Any, I would like to point any out. Comments, Mike? That's what? outrageous. <laughs> I would like to point out that instead, <laughs> Roy likes vocabulary suits. Just because games, I'm like the Android Netrunner. Yep. doesn't mean I can't hear you. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, hell. Look, this is... Oh, oh. I'm not a fan of this. 
Future Roy, put a trash can above Mike's chair. I feel like he's looming behind us. That, right. would, that would be great if we could like fly in a trash <laughs> that would can. Be great. Okay, my number five is something that all, I don't know what Mike was talking about. All his making man, the top one makes him angry. These all infuriate me. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. you're an angry man. I could have gone to twenty. All right, but my number five is clear lack of effort on the behalf of the designers. I mean, they put no effort into the game. So, it, to clarify, I have some pictures of some games here to prove my point. So, these are games where they just made up a name, sat around a table while drunk, threw it together. Yes, I'm including Bible Apple in this. Um, threw it together, copied another game, and then published it. Then they take people's money. They're thieves. They're thieves. They're worse than that. Boo! I'm serious. You play any of these games? I could have designed these games, all five of these, in a, in about three, four minutes. Drunk. No, not drunk. Mm-hmm. Let me pull back a little. Mm-hmm. And that's, num- that's number five, folks, right. for him, okay? <laughs> if he, you think he's calling people thieves now. Number four is about being murderers. <laughs> right. yeah. It gets worse. No, I am, no, I'm going to say, though, that the back of the Factor Crap rule book is definitely one of the best I've ever seen. They, yeah. It's really good. It is well done. Everything you need to know about the game is right there. It's, yeah. How many pieces does it part into? I don't know. It's an empty back of the rule book. All right. That's my number five. Lack of effort. All right, so my number four makes me very angry, Tom. That's what I want. Very angry. Uh, My number four is what I'm calling, according to my notes here, do horrible things to your friends' games. Ah. (laughs) Hey, everybody, let's all sit around a table and have a fantastic experience where, by the end of it, everybody is miserable. Nobody's had a good time. Because the whole point of the game is to make each other very, very angry. I'm not talking about interaction. I know I catch a lot of heat as a solo gamer. Oh, he just doesn't like playing with other people. That's not true. It's true. It's not true. I like interacting with other people. And I'm not even necessarily talking about negative interaction. That's fine. There are certain games that by their very nature are going to have negative direct interaction. You know, uh, area control games, uh, certain negotiation games. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about games that their whole purpose is to make people annoyed, angry, and frustrated. So that by the end of the game, even if you've won, now you're sitting around a table where everybody hates you. And they all hate each other because it's built into the very design of the game. These, I I don't understand the point. Board board games are supposed to be about getting together and enjoying each other. Sure, you're going to get frustrated sometimes. Oh, you took my spot. You took my card. Or... You lied to me. Well, that's built into those games. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about games where it's just like be miserable to the other people around you at the mm-hmm. table. Mm-hmm. A lot of times these you games will You took my car. Back. You took my house. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Those are my pants. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. To be clear, I do. I do. That's a good game. Those are okay. That's, that's a good, good game. Yeah. Okay. Great bag of the rule book. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. No. I, this being miserable to the people Sorry around. Sorry to cut you off. No. I, that's my number four. All right, my number four does not make me angry. It just makes me not want to play with you. So my number four is popular IPs. I feel like they're so... (gasps) That's it? Like, you really... You weren't kidding about a big bucket. Wow. Oh, my. Just all popular IPs? Yes, yes. Because you don't like the IPs? No, this is... So this is a turnoff for me. Like, you have to convince me to play a game. If it's a popular IP and you bring it to me, I'm going to assume that they thought nothing about mechanisms and they just made it all thematic, and there's nothing interesting going on. That's 15 years ago. I was like, so your number four is assumptions. I haven't grown up, Tom. Ooh. Got it. Ooh. Ooh. Huh? Also, no, have you played wow. the Queen's Gambit? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a terrible Queen's game. Gambit. There's no chess in Queen's Gambit, okay? No chess. There's yeah, just chess pieces. War of the Ring. Marvel games. There's all kinds of great IPs. No, I know games. I know that there's good IPs out there, but I am instantly turned off if you tell me first that it's an IP game. Okay, well, what if I tell you it's a Lord of the Rings game? 
instantly turned off until you tell me more. Because do you like Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings is fine. I have nothing against Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I, I'm not seeing the logic here. I don't know. How do you feel about Marvel? It's marvelous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's how I feel. That's I'm, I'm going to keep finding something to really turn this audience against you. Um, <laughs> what's popular? Mistborn. Stranger Things. <laughs> okay, all the Mistborn games are terrible. Stranger Things is a bad Brandon example. Brandon Sanderson right has now, one good game, and that's Reckoners. They're not, they're not getting, taking the bait. All right. Okay. We're trying. We're trying. <clears throat> okay. Let's talk about fantasy. My number four is a glut of stupid, dumb fantasy names in games. <laughs> Are they uh, IP fantasy uh, names? No. That's exactly the problem. They're not IP. It's more like, yay, you made up another fantasy world with another 15 stupid names. <laughs> Where you took two words, like water and cow, and came up with a land called Water Cow. Oh. Or they just like play Boggle. Is that real? Like Please tell me that's real. I, I wish. No. Um, there's a few up there, though, if you want to check out some goofy ones. Yeah, that whole, just, again, you were talking about effort. All these games feel like very low effort worlds to build. It's like, I want to have my own, too. So I'm going to combine some things, come up with some really generic lore, throw some goblins and elves, and, and, and that's it. That's a world. I, I now have my own world, my own setting. And it just feels lazy. And I glaze over when I'm reading a paragraph, and it goes, In the lands of Thrunghala, <laughs> two dwarves named Hukalang and Wushubuf. Okay, come on. That's, that's like, a vassal effect. You're doing a vassal. Yeah, that's He's a vassal. Of me, isn't He's he? doing you. He is. It's <laughs> so lame. I just completely check out. So, my number four a glut of dumb fantasy titles and stuff. That's a good one. I can't believe they agree with you and not me. Did I steal your thunder, Tom? No, I just think it's a dumb one. You say this wow. all the time. This is no, no, I, no. I don't like when it's boring. Well, we'll get to it. Yeah, uh -huh. I stole your thunder stole in the lands of Thunderfall. <laughs> <laughs> a red-hatted man approaches. Ooh. Talk to me when you get to Thunder Cow. I'm all for that. <laughs> all right. So I really like when you find you play a game for the first time and it just really just just hits all the mechanisms you like, right? And you're like, oh, this would be cool. It'd be nice to I don't know play it. A different iteration of it or maybe you've had Cthulhu IP or something like that in it and then they make it and you're excited and then 15 games later you look at your shelf and you realize oh my gosh this is the same game 10 times maybe set in a different country wait this picture they, feels personal um, it may or may not but definitely is from your library I was walking through and just felt this like fiery rage inside when I realized that you have two whole shelves for two games they're great games! I, but they're the same game! You gotta be with me once pandemic. Don't look at the screen, Gizzy. It's fine. I can't see the screen. I'm out of the fantastic. Pandemic. I just what? keep on doing this on Tasmanian Keith. You're picking on pandemic, it's great! It's no, Tom same. is super proud of this show. Over shirt. and over! No, they're all different. No, they're not. <laughs> the Pennsylvania expansion with the stocks is great. Pandemic okay, water many? cow. <laughs> In the lands of Cthulhu mist. <laughs> yeah, just iteration, reiteration of the same game or maybe just a little twist. It just almost just seems like just make a good game. If you have a new mechanism, new way to do it, then just put a new IP on it so Wendy won't play it and put a new IP on it and just enjoy the game that you're making. It doesn't have to be the same game. But money... So easy. It's so, so e much easier. So lazy. Okay, now I'm with you. Okay, thanks. Huh? So, some of you all are doing top five things that make you angry about games. The <laughs> list was top five turnoffs. Same thing for me. No, not mm. the same thing. Mm. This are you saying anger is a turn on? <laughs> this got weird. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> no, my, my number four is a turnoff for me. It is something that, that I immediately assume that I'm not going to want to jump into that game. It doesn't necessarily make me angry, but I don't want to play it necessarily. I call my number four the Gaston because it's roughly the size of a barge. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's the base pledge of Oathsworn. That game is an so evergreen. Good. What? 
I said that game was an evergreen. It wasn't very good. Chris played it. Yeah. And I liked it. Chris and liked it. Just, and you know what I mean? It doesn't necessarily mean that I hate the game. It doesn't induce anger in me. But I look at that and I think, I'm, I'm never going to own that. I'm never going to transport that. I'm not going to start lifting weights so that I can carry oaths for. I'm a weak man. <laughs> in not so many words, yes. <laughs> weak man. Two words. Weak man. In the pastures of milk man, the weak man of, of thunder cow. I think we're, that, that joke is dead. <laughs> Long live the joke with the cow and the thing. Does that mean we're having beef for dinner? I may have said it wrong. But what? my number four. What? The cow's dead. Too big. Games, too big. All right. What, what do you got, Roy? Yeah, I can still hear you. <laughs> you can hear you. Shut up, Tom. <laughs> Wait, was that the, was, was that, that it? Four? That was his fourth. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. oh my! A peek here behind the curtain oh, of the dice yeah, tower. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> From the top again, your picks have been terrible so far. That's right. That's what you get. Well, meanwhile, um, that Nature's of Rome is here. If you want to pick a couple, ah, good. yes. <laughs> Are they the sold couch? out yet? They weren't they as were... of two hours ago. Oh, okay. Now some people put them back after Chris's thing. Yes. Yes. Apparently. That is what I want. I want your copies of Foundations of Rome to block the Suez Canal, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, while we're waiting for Roy, let's do my number four. Um, and this is, a, this is something, and I know that every time I met, this is one everyone knows I don't like, um, but if I read this in a rule book, and it's usually in the first couple of lines, I close the rule book, pack up the box, and I don't play the game. And that's semi-co-op, straight up. Mm. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Hmm. Um, they're like, oh, you're There's not a lot together. of strong agreement in here. I'm surprised. Yeah. Oh, no, because everyone thinks it works, but it doesn't work. And I'm not talking teams. That's not semi co op. I'm not talking about a hidden trader. That's not semi co op. And there's a lot of books, rule books that say semi co op, but they don't know what that means. And you're not talking negotiation either, because some people conflate that with, with semi co op, and negotiation is different. Right. Yeah. I'm saying, they're saying, oh, you know, everyone, you know, one person's going to win, but then one person can, if they decide to, make everybody lose. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> and that irritates me enough. It's a, it's a turn off. I'm hoarding all My the number food. number four, Z Garcia. All the cans of food are mine. Yeah, this is, this is just, this wears on me a lot more lately. So, yeah, so my call. That's my number four. All right, are we going to wait right, to see me, if Roy can come through? Here we go. is going to be a broken or boring theme. So basically what I mean is whenever a theme is something, you're doing something in the game and it just doesn't match the theme at all and just feels like you're doing arbitrary things that you wouldn't actually do in that theme, or if the theme's just completely boring, like it's like, oh, trading stocks in a, in a train company or something like that, or being a oh. farmer and stuff like that. This really is not like the sort of thing. I play games for immersion and games for exciting themes and like escapism. I don't want to do stuff like stock trading and spreadsheets as yes. I play a board game. Agreed. So yeah, boring themes and themes that don't really match are really turned off for me in games. But what if the stock market is a fun theme? It's not though. What trading if it is stocks thematic? in a fantasy land. <laughs> no! No! Also, semi-co-op, look at the screen. Okay, let's go to number three. <laughs> All right, for number three, I'm going to give it a chance for this. To... Oh, yeah, we got this. Wait your turn. Whoops. Just listen to the music. I feel like I'm in a circus. Now you can go. Thank you. My number three, first of all, I'm going to uh, back up Chris here. I think that Tom has been appealing to our baser nature up here. This was not about li things that make you angry. No, but that's a turnoff. I said I opened the book, close it. I get it. it. I'm following the rules of my own you, list. You've been pushing us to be angry, Tom. Well, I want that too. <laughs> you could do both. My number three is, I think, something that turns me off. It doesn't make me angry. It just turns me off. And this is memory as a main game mechanism. Is it because you're getting old? So here we go, here we go. Wendy right away comes with the, is it because you're old? That's the easy joke, I get it, look. I've had a <laughs> terrible memory my entire life. Take that, Wendy. That's right. Is it, is it because you're Mike Delisio? No, look, I remember going to elementary school, I would frequently forget where, I, where it was, and so I'd end up you know, zip lining through a forest canopy or some... <laughs> off-track betting den, you know, trying putting 20 down on uh, Chonky Donkey to win in the fifth. But 
I've always had a terrible memory. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, that made no sense. <laughs> I don't feel like this is something that really, it's not a game me mecha or mechanism. See, now I'm tripped up on mechanic mechanism. This is just like, how well can you remember where things are? That to me is not an exciting or an enticing or, or a meaningful decision. It's just like, can you remember where, the, what did I say? Can you remember where the lollipop is? I don't know where the lollipop is. I saw it 20 seconds ago. I already forgot. Can we play a different game, please? I have no interest in memory as being a big part. And I, I mean, obviously, the game of memory, sure, that's for little kids. But Still there terrible. are a shockingly... And my Delicios. Well, whatever. There are a shockingly high number of games where memory is a big part of the game. And even as an adjunct to that, I don't like games where they have hidden points for trackable information. If I you know what all the points are, why are we hiding them behind a screen? That's stupid. The one person that can now remember all these things has an advantage over the people that either don't care and don't want to or can't. It stops analysis paralysis sometimes. Eh. Sometimes. I don't know. I, I tend like to a... think uh, analysis paralysis is more an issue with, I don't know, the player than the game, but sure, okay. Uh, so is memory. No. Memory is, uh, I, I disagree. No, I got toosh, you back on this toosh. one. I got you back on this one, Mike. Thank you. It feels like a real world implementation of like skill check. Right. And I'm like, no, I know I'm terrible all at it. All gaming is skill. Nah. Okay, it's but all check. Skill. I know I'm nah. bad at memory. Mm -hmm. Why I are you making me check it over and over? I'm always bad at, over over. I'm always bad bad at, at it. it. Right. And so if you're bad, bad at dexterity, dice. wouldn't you be turned off by dexterity games? I'm fine with you not liking memory. I'm fine with you saying it's bad. There's a difference. I'm saying it's From a turnoff what? for me. I have no interest in games where memory is a big part. No, no, no. I'm wrong. Number I three makes me very off. angry. <laughs> anyway, that's my number three. I think three. Yes, three. three. Memory. Do you remember Get it? That was what a joke. We're on? I caught it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, All right. I, well, I don't always agree with Tom, but I agree with Tom on this one. My number three is semi co-op games. Yes. It's so bad. They. They're so bad. <laughs> yeah. They agree with Wendy, not with Tom. This is how I feel when I play a semi-co-op game. I am just waiting for the knife to come down. Oh, that's me. Like, are we going to hold hands and work together? Or is Camilla going to, like, freaking kill me? Oh, Probably she's kill going you. to kill you. Most likely going to kill yeah. you. No, they, I agree, Tom. They don't, don't need work. a skill they check. Don't work. I will kill you. Knife check. It's got really dark. It's <laughs> very terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, my number three is murder. No, um... <laughs> My number three is screen caps in artwork. Oh, oh that's a good this one. This is true. He that's hates a good one. Too. He does. I am not a fan. You know, you were talking about basically not liking any intellectual property, which is uh, crazy talk. <laughs> I I'm fine with that. The game might be good, might not be good. Isn't really related to the to the intellectual property, but taking that intellectual property, if it's a movie or a TV show, and then just screen capturing images from it. And slapping them on cards or whatever is lame. I just don't like the way it looks. It's the path of least resistance for sure. But it, it pulls me out of the game almost. Makes me think too much about the, the, the thing it's based on. And I like a little division there between those two things. If I want to just look at pictures of Lord of the Rings, I'll go watch Lord of the Rings. I don't need to simulate this worst story with these cards. So that really bothers me. I, if it's illustrated, even to look like the movie or the TV show, solid. It's usually pretty good. But just... And, and then you run into the problem of something like a Lord of the Rings trading card game like this. By the time they've come out with 12 sets, you know they're just scraping the bottom of the barrel for... Some dude standing in the back of a battalion who was, you know, picking his nose, wearing a helmet. It's like, give that dude a name, throw him on a card. But it's pixelated. They zoom in so yeah, it's much. Like, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a big one, too. So there you go. My number three, screen caps. Agreed. I feel yeah, that. Agreed. I feel that. Agreed. 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 All right. My number three is a dice game or a game that has dice in it with low mitigation. I love dice. I love that. I feel like they're very clim climactic, right? You know, you're, you're sitting there and you're shaking and you're so excited and then you throw them and then you didn't get it. 
or you did, and that's it. And it's just very polarizing. And I hate that 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 specific mechanism can lead to wasted turns. And it just it instantly just kills the game for me. Mm. I just want to walk away and I understand never see the, the, the game. idea, but why would you put the red cathedral up there? Oh Clearly that's not know, an example. Do you know how many plays of this game too? Because I've only played it twice because I hated it and it was totally turned off. But you you if the dice are not there, there's no mitigation and you end up just doing something to hope your next turn will be better. And then you're just, just this like this hopeless circle of misery and despair. There's mitigation. There's that was the original title little. was Hopeless yeah. Circle of Misery. Oh my God. And they changed and it to why? the Red yeah. Cathedral. Why? Just call the game what it is. Self-description uh, right there. Yes, I just I just feel like it's just wasted turns drive me nuts. And that's usually around the mechanism of dice with no sort of mitigation. It just kills the whole fun behind them. Can't you spend money in this game to move the dice farther? You can, but again, but that's tight. It just, it, it just. You know what? You just fruitless. wanted to put Red Cathedral on the list. No, I did not. Cause I actually had a different game. All, yeah, I did. Uh, I think it's right. because yeah. I think it's because this is beige. I think that's the real problem here. I, I also on the list. Yes. And you crossed over with yourself. With that's the first time crossover. in Dice Tower history. <laughs> there we go. It used to be called the Beige Cathedral. Mm. Oh my gosh, that was a second name. They changed it for yeah. you, Camilla. Well, they should try again. <laughs> All right. Before we look at the slide for my number three, I want to make something very clear. In my past life, I was an accountant. A lot of people assume Surprise. that. Surprise! <laughs> Numbers. Thank you, Hunter. Uh, a lot of people assume, Chris, do financial games, do, do say, for example, you know, highly thematic stock trading games. In a fantasy right. world. So, you know, do they remind you of your job? Do they make you dread it? And, I, and, and they don't. What actually makes me think more of my job that I left on purpose is something like this slide right here. This is a player aid. This is a simplification of the Twilight Imperium 3 tech tree. You have not played this game. You don't even know what you're talking about. I've played about. it twice, Tom. <laughs> you played it twice? Yes. That's very... No, you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well said. The cards themselves tell you this is just something I try. Have you never played Sid Meier's Civ? This is exactly what that looks like. No, because this is a turnoff. If I and I might like the game, Tom. I might enjoy myself, and I do like Twilight Imperium. But when this is your simplification of how the system works, you gotta do better than that. Mm -hmm. Like maybe a fourth edition. They and did they, do it in fourth uh -huh. edition. Yes. <laughs> I think time a time will tell that I am correct here, Tom. Mm -hmm. When fifth edition comes out next summer, everybody hey. scoop! <laughs> bah, bah, bah. That's just a joke. Please uh, don't sue me, Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Roy. I really enjoy playing games with people. I like to sit down around the table and play them with other people and enjoy the friendship and camaraderie that comes with gaming. So my number three is a game with zero interaction. Okay. So I know some people like their solo, like multiplayer, solitaire games, yes. but when I play a game, I really want to play, have like some agency with the other players and try to figure things out either together or have ways to affect the other players in some way. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like interaction in their games, especially not heavy interaction, but actually really enjoy like the dynamic of like playing the game together. And we're actually all there at the table working through these different problems, whether it be cooperatively or competitively, being able to interact with the other players. So it's really a turn off for me if you're playing a game that just has zero player interaction whatsoever. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Sounds like a semi co op lover. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, he likes toxic interaction mm -hmm. sometimes. Marvel Champions, multiplayer solitaire. Am I right? Oh, you are huh? right. Huh? Huh? I don't you I'm just making right. that up. It's not. All right. Uh, so here at Dice Tower, we got a lot of review copies, and we also get solicitation will you review this game? And I would say on a monthly basis, someone will email me and say, Do you like Cards Against Humanity? Do you think it's too tame for you? Have we got the game for you? Mm. Sometimes they don't ask us, and the games show up to the joy of my wife. <laughs> my number three, we're on three, right? Yeah, my mm. number three is after dark editions of games. Mm. You're not cool for this. So this is a straight turn off for me. I won't even look at them. I won't give them time of day. You know, I know some people play games blues, you know, not the color. Blues Clues, yeah. <laughs> but if Blues game... Clues After Dark. Yeah. <laughs> More blue edition. <laughs> the bigger, bluer box. 
<laughs> we should really pull back now. <laughs> um, this almost is the same as my number five, laziness. Mm-hmm. Because, but this puts the laziness on the players. Again, if you're going to do this sort of game, you know, where is the cleverness? Ooh, I can read dirty words off a card. Yay! <laughs> this so, card says poop. <laughs> I mean, there, there's, and as much as I'm, I'm glad that Target is, you know, having all kinds of games in it now, and that's fantastic. The fact that there's like a whole shelf dedicated to this in the middle of the kids' toy section really bothers me. It's stupid. It's lazy. It's dumb. I hate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Spencer's. You thought you knew Blue's Clues? <laughs> you have no idea. Oh, I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Tom just told you all to go to Spencer's, by the way. I don't know if you caught that. Um, <laughs> Is that a threat? <laughs> no, I meant that's where those games should yeah, be. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm just thought that was funny. All right. Um, speaking of funny... My number two is the antithesis of funny, and that is forced wackiness. <laughs> hey! Mm-hmm. Oh, man, do I hate this. Oh, is, is Quelf man. up there? It, you, sure. Yes, it Quelf, should be. Quelf, yeah, I just That's found this one. one. But they're all the same. They're all like, we don't have enough ideas, so we're going to put these stupid, like, I don't know, Things you stick in your mouth and things you cram into your ear and little bunny ears what? and things you cram in your ear. What? Yeah, <laughs> which of these games are you playing? This is, this is the after dark. He problem. went to Spencer's. <laughs> Tom, you play Ticket to Go your way. I'll play it my way. All I'm saying is these games. This is, goes with your laziness. To me, this is yes. like we cannot do something that actually has humor. So we're going to do these ridiculous things. We're going to put things on a card to make you stand up and do the chicken dance. That's great. I, I have zero interest in these types of games. They, they seem so lazy. So, again, they're trying to create some type of fun and excitement and, and wha- you know, wackiness at the table. You can do that in a clever way. This is not that. This is just do stupid things. There you go. Yep. There's my number two, forced wackiness. There you go. There you go. Mike, I now want you to act like a monkey, please. <laughs> hey! That was, just the, that was the clown again. <laughs> <laughs> You're a monkey clown. All right. My number two is Take That Games. This fits a lot along with your number five. Mm, okay. Um, just mean. I don't like mean games. I don't like bullies. I don't I don't like the experiences many times that I've had of my toilet being my head being in a toilet. My mm. toilet being in my head. All the above. Wait, what's Steve, going on right now? It's a forced wackiness. Uh, Put the toilet you in your ear. <laughs> Mike is making me do this. No. <laughs> no, I just mean games are not my thing. And early on in the hobby. Uh, my brother-in-law brought Munchkin into our house, and I was so excited to play. And, yeah, no, I don't like Munchkin, okay? I hate Munchkin. Also, I played a seven-hour version of it, and I hated it so much. What about the, the ones that have an IP, though? Yeah, no, no. So the game that I played, this one was very short, because before I even had a turn, I died and was out of the game. Like, it was, it was so bad. I don't like take that games. I don't like mean stuff. I don't like stuff where you can just get hurt for the sake of hurt or be mean for the sake of mean. I'm not a fan. Oh, wow. I didn't know we had that option. I'd had a completely different list. What? My number two is basically Mike's number two, and that is having to act or say something stupid during the game. (laughs) Yeah. You went more for the over the top silly thing. Mm-hmm. Those are I mean, those are out and out just discarded in right. my head. Yeah. This is more something that's again irksome. Mm-hmm. And that's in a regular old game that you wouldn't think any of this would show up in. About halfway through the rule book, they have this one line that says Whenever you brew a potion, you have to say Alakazam. <laughs> <laughs> And I just, it, it, I always sort of don't know how to take that because it seems like the kind of rule that is, I mean, it's obviously unnecessary, but it also seems like the kind of rule put there to sell it to people in a mass market store, I guess, or a big box store. But the game isn't necessarily that kind of game because it's not the overtly goofy, mm-hmm. silly one. It's just a regular old game. I mean, I put Uno up there because, well, 
you know, that image is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just never understood that. In a game that doesn't seem to be that kind of game, you've stuck in a moment of what I assume you consider levity because we have to say something goofy or silly or announce something out loud when we can just not do that. There's no mechanical reason to do it. You just think it's funny? It confounds me. I do not get it. That's my number two, having to say or do something silly. Because I guess you think it's <laughs> ridiculous. And I'm not a fan of that. You know, I think the most recent game that did this was Planted. I really like Planted. Phil Walker Harding game, great game. But if you want to get a new plant, you're supposed to yell nursery. That right. rule was like, not but that's taught, not taught to silly. me. That's not that's that one's But also it feels weird. Like, why am I doing that? So we know you're doing it. So you're not playing. Well, I would just say I'm going to the nursery or something. Like, I don't know why it's like nursery with an exclamation point. <laughs> like, they put that exclamation point in there for a reason. That's how I drive to the nursery. How about you? <laughs> nursery! <laughs> <laughs> This doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you. I, but I have a more sense of humor. I like to reverse that because that sounded really mean. No, not at all. <laughs> no, but kids, there's a lot of people that appeals to making those silly noises. Kids. And I hate all kids. of them. I haven't gotten to my number one yet, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Give me a moment. People. All right. In games, I'm, I'm, I think Mike and I, we've discussed it before, we're probably the shallow gamers of the yeah, office, sure. right? Like, I like a really pretty game. I like my big miniatures. I like uh, just the toy factor in games. and really pretty. But what I hate is when there's a good game and those really cool components that I love and drool over get in the way. Like, cool components should still be functional. Yeah. We've played a couple games of this so far uh, recently in the office, and it's really been driving me nuts. Uh, one where the miniatures didn't like literally did not fit on the board together and we it was it was its own puzzle trying to make it on there or you can't see half the board so you're all constantly asking your opponent how much does that over there cost because there's a massive tower in the way and I can't see it's so frustrating this I love cool components I love miniatures I love epic looking games but dag nab let me play a game make it functional play your game with those components so that you know I can play it Mm. Drives me nuts. Fire. Fire. Flames. It's less of a problem if you're taller, because you can see over the piece. Oh, oh, wow. Just, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Try that so next time. Wow. Oh, yeah, let me just try being taller, Tom. I'm getting right on that. And number one, Tom. How do you spell vassal? <laughs> vassal. Why number two turn off is it, it's going to be actually going to harken back to Wendy's. It's when you have a really interesting theme or a good IP or a hot new TV show or movie or something, and you have the ability and the finances and the know-how and the team and the capability of making something really great in that world, and you make a social deduction game. It's kind of a cop-out. Kind of a cop-out. I'm 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 very on board with this. That's it's it it's kind of like your point of it's it's lazy. We know social deduction works. It works uh, very easily, and you can do that with many shows. Who is the secret uh, dragon? Who is the secret killer? Who is anything? Right. But I want really good IP games so we can finally convince Wendy that mm -hmm. you know we can optimistically play them. But when you do something like that, when you just make a Ozarks the social deduction game or Stranger Things, what a cool world that could be in a board game, the social deduction game. I'm out. I agree with you. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I still say season two of Secret Dragon is really underrated, though. That's a fantastic show. You should check it out. What Secret, Secret Dragon is that on? <laughs> Let's not get caught up in the details. <laughs> All right, Roy. So my number two is going to be bad aesthetics or graphic design. Too much beige. So yeah, if a game just like the aesthetics and the way the game looks just doesn't draw me in or it like is counterintuitive to the theme or the graphics just, 
are really hard to read or, or hard to make sense of. I really don't enjoy a game as much. I like to be immersed in games and like be drawn in by the theme and like to see the story that the game is laying in front of us. And if it's just all crazy looking and just beige and boring and just doesn't like really draw you in, it's just all cubes, it's not as big of a thing for me. I just like to play games that look beautiful as I play them. So yes, uh, bad aesthetics, and bad graphic design is my number two turnoffs in games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Right, Roy, Roy has a point. So when we get games, we have this, we open them up, we unbox them, they go on the shelf, and then we pull them off and play them. And Roy's right, if there's aesthetics there, mm -hmm. they're bad, it, you don't pull it off because it's a turnoff. Mm -hmm. We do judge games by their covers. It's yes. silly to say otherwise. My number two, similar to that, um, Way back in the day, I coined the phrase trading in the Mediterranean, you know, because I was getting tired of that. But I'm expanding that. So my number two is a term that someone here came up with in the office. Genaria. All right. That's Z, I think. That's, That's a Z. Z right there. Me or you? I don't remember I don't one know. of us. And That's I, a, that was actually a commentary on the fantasy it names was, yes. thing. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, let's go to the, some, some examples here. Here we, go. Games. here we go. So I just got a couple games here. Um, but... I can't even read that one in the top, the top corner. I think it's called Trading in the Middle Ages or something to that. Woo, just stop me, Tom. I'm going for it. It doesn't matter. It's so boring, <laughs> it's forgettable. But every, like, I, I know everyone gets excited. We get these big fantasy games in, and I read through it, and then you get a sword. You are a fighter. You're fighting a goblin. Woo. You know, put some effort into expanding the theme, and I right. see that. I'm not interested. If it's, ooh, I'm, the king wants you to build a castle. Are you kidding me? I've already built 50 for the lazy old man. Stop it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and then it's, uh, oh, what animal's popular? Plaster it on some cards. Mm. Generic, I hate it so much. I'm, I'm always uh, so happy when it's a new, interesting theme. Mm -hmm. You know, something, you know, a, a fantasy theme where it feels different, a, a sci-fi theme where there's some new, unique aspect to it, or, you know, a, a historical game about something that's not Pete or <laughs> sheep. I mean, are you kidding me? I like sheep, I guess. You know, they give me clothing or whatever, but... Um, <laughs> But do they have to be in every game? I, I don't know. I'm so bored of just the same old generic theme mm -hmm. over and over. And if I see that, I'm like, what about this other game? Also, can we have more food games? Okay. Mm -hmm. I want cute food games. Cute? What? Cute food games. You want to eat cute food? No, like Sushi Go, like with the cute little faces. No, I want the. No. I want to look at the food game and go, hmm. Exactly. If it's Have a food game, the, uh, I want to eat it. Has anyone seen the dim sum game that's out there? So yes. juicy. <laughs> there's there's cool. some weird looking chicken feet in that, though. No, they I look delicious. See, that strikes the balance of cute and tasty, like I might accidentally have eaten some, and I'm sorry if you're from the Hot Banana Games. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> did Mike just say he would eat chicken feet? I want to no, come back. Didn't. I want to circle back to that. Are no, you Southern? No. It's happening. I, no, I would actually be terrified. On camera. I'd be terrified. I, I, I'm pretty sure we have video mm -hmm. footage of Mike oh, saying spectacular. Eat chicken feet. Snack talk. Mm -hmm. I hear it's like popcorn. I'm sure. All right, anyway, that's my number two. All right, so my number one, I'm going to get out my old man specs here in a second because there's a lot of words on this one. And this is something that you said, Z, where it's not something that's going to necessarily be readily apparent. So I don't get turned off right away because I won't know until I crack open the box. Mm -hmm. All right? So my number one is, uh, what did I put here? It won't recognize my face? What, are you kidding me? Come on. There we go. My number one is terrible, awful, completely incomprehensible rule books. I mean, are you kidding me with some of the rule books that are, I mean, th this is my big pet peeve in general in gaming. And, and I know it's not new, but I'm telling you, I really feel like it's getting worse, not better. Uh, the first interaction that you're really going to have with a game is generally going to be the rule book. And if you are frustrated and annoyed before you get through the first page, it might be a great game, but I may never find out because I'm going to... You know, unless it's for the job, Tom. Let me be clear. Unless it's for the job, I'm going to give up. 
some of these rule books are actively working against people being able to enjoy it. If you're a game designer, you might be a fantastic game designer. It does not mean you know how to write a rule book. If you're a developer, you might be a great developer. It doesn't mean you know how to write a great rule book. It is a particular skill. It is something that people can learn and work at and spend time. I don't think that enough games, enough publishers, whatever the case may be, are taking this seriously enough. You are angering people, you're frustrating them, and you're not giving them a good introduction to your game. I assume if you make a game, and I'm getting worked up, I assume <laughs> if you're making a game, the purpose behind that is that you want people to enjoy that game, to have the best experience they can have with it. If they don't feel confident that they even know how the game works, how are they going to have a good time with it? Get better! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Oof. Fire. Witness. Do you need some water after that? I got that? some over here. I'm mad. Oof. Okay. Well, following up with that, um, my, my number one, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to title this category because it's a very clear type of game for me that just frustrates me. I hate playing them. I keep trying them, and I just keep getting frustrated. So I call it Dudes on the Map, but this, this basically fits any sort of game where you are building, recruiting an army, and you're fighting. It just drives me nuts. And I especially hate, I especially hate the, hey, I'm going to go fight you, and then I'm going to roll some dice and see if I made a good choice. Like, that really bothers me. That really bothers me. Because there's no mitigation on those dice? Yes. Number three? Yes. 100%. No, I just... I. This type of game, forever, I have been trying. I've been trying. And poor Roy, every time that he, he has like a cool birthday and we game a bunch and stuff, it's always these games. And I love you, Roy. I hate these games. <laughs> they drive me nuts. Give me cubes on a map, please. Give me some beige. I want that beige. What are you saying? <laughs> I, I don't know. She's I'm all about that beige. About incomprehensible. That beige. No travel. No. Um, yeah, I just, it drives me nuts. I don't know if it's, well, it's got to be me. I don't know if it's oh, just it's the you. way that my brain works, but there's something about like making those tactical decisions. I don't know what the heck to recruit. And even if I do, I could have, I could have like the biggest, best dudes in my space and you come in with two little dinky, like super easy to get guys and you mm -hmm. just wipe it out. Like strategy. Mm -hmm. this is not Star Wars. <laughs> you can't just destroy the Death Star with an X-Wing. Like it doesn't work that way. Yes, you can. <laughs> this is <laughs> yes, you can. I've watched they a built in a flop. I've watched two documentaries, okay. three documentaries about it. Yes. <laughs> it's a trap. Man. Man. All right. My whatever number, you say, what, what you're good. I know, right? I can't lose. You're, you're I can gold. say whatever I want. My number one is components that need to be taken apart to go back <laughs> in the box. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That one. That's really That's good. So good. That's good yeah. Are you kidding me? That's really good. Yeah. I did not even think of that. That is fantastic. No. 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 I refuse to. It's either never getting built again, or it's staying built, which means I keep looking at the thing like, oh, I hate the thing. I can't take it apart and put it. <laughs> Or I'm just letting the game go. The only one that I can think of is actually the example I'm using because I didn't want to just pick on a game and be mean to it. I love this game. But I never build that stupid tree anymore. <laughs> I just don't. I can just lay that middle level of the goofy tree thing, <laughs> plop, throw it on the table, slap some cute little things on there, and I'm done. I'm not building it. It does nothing, for one thing. But also... You have to take the whole thing apart every time. Shove it back in there. Oh, you want to play? Give me about 12 minutes while I dust off the old engineering degree and put this thing together again. I can't deal with this, okay? Figure it out. You know what your box size is going to be. Don't give me something that you know isn't going to fit. The worst is when it, like, barely doesn't fit. Right. Oh, come on. Learn some math from the illustrious Tom Vassell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody else. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you you gotta you gotta do better than that. It's just infuriating. That's my number one. Mm. That was a good one. Mm. 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 All right.
right, my number one is a repeat from both Mike and Z, and That's it is going do. to be doing stupid stuff mm-hmm. in games, and I mean stupid stuff, especially in games this that I like. This is why I end up playing all these games. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yes, <right>. <laughs> that is why. <laughs> no, and specifically the most recent example of this is in Marvel Champions, a game that I love, and then we get the spider pig, and it wants me to high five my my other person in order to get something or shout something stupid. No, I want to punch Rhino in the face. With, I don't with, want to with spider pig. Spider pig, spider ham, spider what did ham. What you expect? I expected, I don't know, some sort of mechanism. Something that like brings value to the game that I love, that expands it. A spider ham. Yes. <laughs> that is my expectation, Tom Vassell. Yes. Oh, she used the full name. <gasps> I'm sorry, ma'am. Okay. Ooh. I j- oh. Ooh. You're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> no dinner for you tonight. Right, or I mean, dead. In, in X-Men United, you know, I mean, oh, it, just, it drives me nuts when there's a game that you like and they're like, mm, I don't know, let's spice this up and do something stupid. No, thank you. Yeah. No, I don't want to. And I'm not going to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When it comes to number one, this one actually does make me fairly angry. It's something I agree with Tom a lot about. Everybody? It's late at night, put the kids to bed, because it's time to pull out chess after dark. After dark. Hmm. I was really worried what picture you were about to show. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> Avert your eyes. I, I have no interest, ever, 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 in ever playing any of these types of games, because many of these games already exist, and there's a... There's a an After Dark, or a four adults version of something, and it's just not clever, like Tom said. If you want to play a game like Say Anything, where you can write all of your own responses, you, it's on you to be clever, and you can put funny stuff, and you can feel out your group. You can't <laughs> feel out that group. Oh, Go ahead. I wasn't going to do it. I just want to be clear. I wasn't going to do it. I did it. <laughs> that was Z. <laughs> hey. You can play to the standards of someone like me, or you can play to the standards of someone like Z Garcia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. That's on you, so yeah. No, no interest. Uh, this is my biggest turnoff ever. I will not touch one of these games. Yeah. All right, Roy. My number one, my number one turnoff in a game is a game that has no meaningful decisions. I want to be able to make cool choices in a game and feel like I have like some sort of player agency. If like the entire game is just chucking dice with no real choices, I want choices where I can pick things up. Or if it's like Candy Lane where you're just flipping a card and technically the game's predetermined before you even play the game. I want to make awesome decisions and be able to build things up as the game goes along and be able to feel like I have some sort of agency to actually play a game. If it comes out where there's no actual meaningful choices, it doesn't feel like you're actually playing. You're just kind of doing an activity as things are going along. But yeah, meaningful choices in games is the most important thing. And if you have no meaningful choices, it's my number one turnoff. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, Roy, I'll stop beating you at Candyland. I'm a number one to cross over, and I use a whole lot less words than Mike. <laughs> and that is just bad rules. Mm. Oddly enough, um, we use the picture of the same game. Uh. Um, so let me show you a couple games here that, uh, yeah, Batman, right? We all know Batman, but there's several bad game rules. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Mike says you know, he'll do it for the job. I won't. If your rule book is indecipherable, I'm putting the game away. I don't care. You're giving it to Mike. Mike. You know, again, it's even worse when your first game's rule book's bad and the whole internet tells you so, and you make it again with another bad rule book. It's ridiculous. Come on. And then you have a successful Kickstarter because people are obviously stupid enough to think you might fix it. They might fix it the third time around, but I doubt it. Also, I don't care anymore. Mm-hmm. I, oh, it's so it's frustrating. This, exhausting. So I, I like to pride myself that we play games. I don't get mad in games. You attack me. Roy crushes me 100 to two. I try not to get mad. But I have thrown rule books. Mm-hmm. I have ripped up rule books, and I have kicked the game across the room because of a bad rule book. I hate it so much. Mm-hmm. And it, but it turns me off the game. You're like, that's an amazing game, Tom. 
Tom online, watch Rodney Smith. I don't want to have to watch Rodney Smith. Uh, Nobody wants to watch Rodney Smith. Okay. That's what Tom Vassell said. That's right. Okay. Don't come at me. I was gonna say. Okay. That's Even what Tom Vassell said. He's such a handsome, well, well articulated <laughs> Canadian beast of a man. What's the sound of that backing up? Beep. So, so Rodney, <laughs> you leave. But what I mean is, I shouldn't have to watch that. And I worry when I get a rule book and they're like, don't want to read the rules, click this QR code. That's cool. But why don't you want me to read the rule book? Mm -hmm. I can't also always watch a video. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. I'm in the middle of a loud area. I'm like, hang on, quiet down. And then, and then some of these rules videos are also, you know, an hour long. Right. And I can't, if I need help in the rule book, quick scan the video. Right? The rule no. book is important. And it's, I mean, this includes everything. Player aids. Back of the rule book, player aids, player aids. How hard is it to put five cards in your game? Right. So put, hey. I agree here 100%, yeah. especially the way you said it, Mike, where it seems to be getting worse because the priority keeps going then to extremely flashy, insane miniatures. Right. And the rule book continues to be pushed further and further yeah. back. And, it's, and it seems, again, like it, they get a free pass because we'll fix it online because it'll just we'll publish one or actually even worse players will suffer through right. the bad rule book and publish a better one they'll put up player aids unacceptable yep that's not on me right. you know we i bought the thing right you need to finish it right so yeah, there are absolutely. certain games that that a living rule book the idea of a living rule book makes sense a midweight euro doesn't need a living rule book. Figure right. it out. Write it well the first time. Man, yeah. man. All yeah. right. <laughs> well, those are <laughs> those are five turnoffs. It was about twenty of them or so between <laughs> all of us. And again, there's always exceptions. There are games with bad rule books that I have then enjoyed eventually when I suffered mm -hmm. through that. There are games that do stupid things in them that Z makes us just not follow that rule and you mm -hmm. still enjoy the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Or I might even do it and be like, oh, this one kind of works for me. Mm -hmm. Back of the rule book, it's fine. Some games are my favorite ones. Taking a thing apart, I still won't do that. That's right. <laughs> Stop it. But uh, anyway, we want to thank a lot of people. I want to thank everyone here for coming and putting this together. We want to thank you all for taking time out of Gen Con to come and watch us. We appreciate that. Roy put all the PowerPoint and everything together, and he's in the back. Thank you to Roy. And we want to thank, of course, the people who are manning the Dice Tower booth and don't get to come to the show. They're there right now. Come by and say hi to us there. Uh, well, thank you to the Op for uh, sponsoring us. I'll be at their booth tomorrow morning. But that's enough for now. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Roy Kennedy. And that's it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>